Hey everyone! Through a dear friend's request, this week's video is focused upon shoulder dislocation. 95% of shoulder dislocations happen when the head of the humerus, this long bone in the arm, comes forward relative to the glenoid fossa. It's a ball and socket joint in our shoulder, which gives us great range of motion, but at the cost of potential instability, with the greatest example being shoulder dislocation. Now how this happens is the arm coming back into the side, whether that's a sporting injury, car accident, whatever the mechanism of injury, this coming back to the side is again what usually causes that forward 95% of the time movement of the joint causing dis the dislocation. Now that's what I'll be focused upon in this week's video. I hope you guys find it really helpful and be sure to hit the subscribe button for more informational videos of physical therapy and how they can improve your life. If you or someone you know has just dislocated your shoulder, you want to perform what's called the Stimson technique. To do this, you want to lay down on a surface that's high enough where your arm can dangle off the side with weight in your hand, such as a dumbbell, without touching the floor. Either a table, a high bed, whatever you can use around the home or the office, like so. This again is called the Stimson technique and has been shown to be effective in terms of repositioning the shoulder after a dislocation. So a quick and easy test to determine if your shoulder actually is dislocated and that's the cause of your shoulder pain is to just reach your arm towards the opposite shoulder. If this is not possible or highly difficult and painful, most likely your shoulder is dislocated and this will be the video for you. So when getting into the treatment of shoulder dislocation and associated shoulder instability, it's important to first discuss the role of the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff is a series of four muscles that together help to stabilize, again, the head of the humerus in the glenoid fossa, the ball and socket joint of the shoulder. And if we can strengthen these muscles, that's the primary intervention that can be used to stabilize the shoulder and prevent future shoulder dislocations. So the exercises that we use in physical therapy to prevent this issue primarily relate to strengthening the rotator cuff. So the four, first thing to start with when working on this issue is called isometric contractions of the shoulder. What this means is tension is developed within the muscle without actual movement occurring. We can have an isometric contraction in which we tighten the muscle group, but there's no actual movement that occurs. That's what we want to start with for the first two weeks when treating this issue because it's much less painful and it will provide a baseline of strength to graduate to higher level exercises. Then we want to do isotonic exercises, meaning movement is actually occurring within the shoulder. So when starting the rehabilitative process following a shoulder dislocation, we want to first again work on isometric exercises. There's four of them to get started with and what works best for this is to use a door frame. So you want to come up to that door and the first movement is shoulder flexion. Now again, we're not trying to move with the movement at first, but instead just apply pressure into the door. We want to hold for five second holds for 10 repetitions. When you do this, you want to be looking straight ahead, standing tall, nice posture, and just bringing that arm forward and again applying pressure at a moderate contraction for five seconds. So first is flexion. The second movement is shoulder abduction or coming to the side. But again, not trying to move, but instead rather to push into the door frame for again five seconds. Now, if you've been watching my previous videos, I have two pain rules that I want everyone to follow. No pain past five out of 10. No sharp shooting, blinding pain, nothing like that. It should be less than a five. And if it's not, don't push so hard. Also, the pain should go away within about a minute. If it's not, again, don't push so hard and build yourself up a bit more gradually. So five second holds, flexion and abduction. So the next two movements to restabilize your shoulder and prevent future shoulder dislocations 
is isometric internal and external rotation. Again, isometric meaning no movement. So you come up to a door frame and apply pressure coming in for five second hold, 10 sets. Five seconds on, a couple seconds off. Five seconds on, a couple seconds off. The next is similar but opposite, pushing out. So elbow at 90 degrees, pushing out for five seconds. Again, keeping pain less than a five. And if you have lingering pain more than a minute when you're done, you know it was too much. So after working on isometric stabilization for approximately two weeks, we want to start working on isotonic exercises or movement-based exercises. Start with something small. Even if you think you can do more, start with something light, like a two pound dumbbell, something like that. If you don't have any dumbbells around the home, you can use fluid filled water bottles, sacks of beans, sacks of rice, soup cans, whatever you have that would be approximately one to two pounds to get started with. Now the first movement is shoulder flexion and we only want to go to 90 degrees. You want to move slowly on the down, that's where the majority of strength is built. The up can be a bit faster, but try to keep the whole movement slow. Just moving forward and back, again to 90 degrees, not past 90 degrees. The second exercise is to work on what's called shoulder scaption. Scaption means not forward, not to the side, but right in between. Here. Same kind of idea. Start with 90 degrees. So in addition to flexion and scaption, you also want to progress into internal rotation and external rotation with resistance. Internal rotation targets the subscapularis and external rotation targets the teres minor and the infraspinatus, all of which will give greater stability to the shoulder and prevent future shoulder dislocations. The best tool for this is a theraband. And the first step is to tie a knot right in the middle of the band so you can close that, that in the door, like so. Following that, we want to use a towel under the elbow. Why that is, it's a very common problem that people demonstrate, that the arm comes too far away from their body. We don't want to do that, that's going to be quite painful and it's really not as effective of strengthening process. So holding a towel underneath that elbow against the body helps to keep the, arm, the elbow by your side and targets those muscle groups more effectively. From there, you wanna take that band. I like to wrap the band around my hand. It seems like it's more of a comfortable grip that way. We only wanna rotate out to 40 degrees. This is 90, so about half of that, right there. We don't wanna go past 40 degrees again because it's Again, placing that, that shoulder at a great risk of dislocation, and it may be very painful. So only keep that external rotation approximately 40 degrees. So the next, again, is internal rotation. Now, your internal rotators are usually much stronger than your external. That's why when I teach this technique, I like to put the knot right in the middle of the band and close it in so you can use both straps for this one. Taking that towel again, putting under the elbow to keep that arm by your side, grabbing on to both straps. Again, you can loop if you want and coming internally. So again, from here, internally. The in can be fast, the back should be slow. So quick, pause, slow is the right tempo. Quick, pause, slow. Sets of 10 repetitions, two sets, twice a day.
So this week's video has been all about what do we do if we dislocate our shoulder? How do we get that shoulder back in the right position with the use of the Stimson technique? As well as what is the rehabilitative exercises at first, as well as higher level exercises to recover from this condition. But there are many topics I can post about and it really depends on what you guys would like to see. So be sure to post your comments below and subscribe so I can do my best to create a meaningful video for you or a loved one to improve quality of life. This is Dr. John Mayo, physical therapist, really hoping that this program has been helpful for you or a loved one and improves your life.